This is MathGuide.com. My name is Mark Karadimos. Today we're going to take a look at Rational Root Theorem. So the Rational Root Theorem. Now here you can see that I have a polynomial. And this polynomial is fourth degree. And its name is g of x. So we've got this polynomial and we're trying to figure out what are all the roots or zeros of this polynomial. Well, the way we do it and, uh, is actually taking a look at this last term. So we take a look at this term right here, and that is the constant term. If we take a look at that term, that term right there is going to let us know what the factors are. And that's where we're going to start. So we say, all right, well, the factors of 20 are 1. Actually, let me do that in white. So the factors are 1 goes into 20, 2 goes into 20, we've got uh, 4 goes into 20, we've got 5 that goes into 20, 10 that goes into 20, and 20 goes into 20. So all of these are factors and positives and negatives we have to consider. So it looks like we've got a number of factors to consider. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 times 2, because there's positives and negatives, there's 12 possible factors. All right, now that would be simple enough if this leading coefficient here was 1. If the leading coefficient was 1, this would be the possible zeros that we would be looking at. All right, but it turns out that since we have a coefficient that's 3, we now must also look at the possible factors of 3. And let's write those down. So all the possible factors of 3 are 1, 3. And of course we're going to consider positives and negatives on those also. All right, so we have a number of factors to consider. And what I want to do is also put a division sign between them because we're going to take the factors of 20 as numerators and the factors of 3 as denominators and we're going to form all possible rational roots. So this includes fractions as well. So there are a number of them. All right, so if we were to take all of these factors in the numerator and divide them by 1, we would get the same factors. So we're going to get 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, and 20. Uh, okay, now let's divide them all by 3. So let's see, 1 divided by 3 is a third. Uh, let's see, 2 divided by 3 is 2 thirds. Uh, let's see, 4 divided by 3, that's 4 thirds. 5 divided by 3 is 5 thirds. Okay, 10 divided by 3 is 10 thirds and 20 divided by 3 is 20 thirds. So these are all the possible factors and of course we're going to consider positives and negatives on them. So there are a number of them to consider and of course what you would do next to actually find them is you would use synthetic division. So synthetic division would then be used to determine which of these are actual roots or not. All right, so there's a number of roots where we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, times 2 is 24 possible roots. All right, we're going to show you another example in a second. Here's example number 2. So now we've got a different polynomial. This polynomial is p of x, and it looks like we've got three terms, and it's got the highest degree 3, so it's a degree 3 polynomial. All right, so what we're going to do is figure out what are all the possible rational roots. All right, well, let's write them all down. Well, the way we start, of course, is with the end term. Okay, we start with that, and we write down what are all the possible factors. So we got 1 goes into 10, 2 goes into 10, 5 goes into 10, 10 goes into 10. And, of course, we've got positive negatives of each. Uh, let's next talk about the leading term. So here's the leading term of 4. So let's write all the factors of 4. 1 goes into 4. 2 goes into 4. 4 goes into 4. And of course, positive and negatives on all of those. 
Now what we do is of course form a big fraction taking the uh, end factors and dividing them by the leading coefficient factors and that's how we're going to form them all the possible rational roots. So if I divide all of these by 1, I get the same, and I get 1, 2, 5, 10. If I divide them all by 2, let's see, I get 1 divided by 2, that's a half. Let's see, I get 2 divided by 2, that's 1, I already have that listed. 5 divided by 2, all right, that's 5 halves. Let's see, 10 divided by 2, that's 5. All right, got that already listed. All right, now let's divide them all these by 4. 1 divided by 4 is a fourth. 2 divided by 4 is a half. Got that listed. 5 divided by 4, all right, let's list that one. And let's see, 10 divided by 4, that's 5 halves. Got that listed already. All right, so there we have it. We have all of our factors listed. And we have to keep in mind that there are positive and negative varieties of each. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 times 2, because there's positives and negatives, there's 16 possible factors. So it turns out that this is going to be quite the long problem to actually find them all. So what we're going to do now is use synthetic division to find them. So what I'm going to do is put this big division sign. It's like an upside down division sign. And I'm going to try uh, something simple. Let's try one. So I'm going to put one on the outside. And now I'm going to put all the coefficients on the inside. But you remember here that I, I'm missing a square. So I have zero x squares. Okay, so I have to make sure I put a placeholder in here for synthetic division. So I've got four, zero, negative 21, negative 10. So I'm going to try this and I'm hoping it's going to work. All right, so you know how this works. We bring down the uh, first term, multiply, add, multiply, add. I think that's negative 17. I multiply, add, and no luck. Our remainder is not zero. Didn't work. So what I'm going to have to do is Try another number. I'm going to try negative 1 and see if that works. Okay, so that'll be the next one I try. I'm going to put a negative. I'm going to clear all this out. All right, let's try it again. Now let's try it with negative 1. So I'm going to bring down the leading coefficient. So that would, of course, be 4. Multiply. Add. Multiply. Add. Multiply add, and it looks like here I get 7. Now, well, still not a 0. So it looks like uh, the 1's just don't work. Whether it's negative 1, whether it's positive 1, they don't work. So what I'm going to have to do is try some other number. So I'm going to clear all this out. Alright, so I'm going to try as my next one a half. See if that works. So that'll be my next attempt. Bring down the leading coefficient. Half of 4 is 2. Add. Half of 2 is 1. Add. Half of negative 20 is negative 10. Add. Nope. That's not getting us a 0 also. So I'm going to have to clear this out and try another one. And as you can see, this is extremely tedious. And you have to go through all these and you have to erase or you have to have a large... A uh, slip of paper to keep all this accurate. All right, I'm going to clear this out. Try another one. All right, so I'm going to try now negative a half and see if that works. All right, so again, I'm going to bring down the leading coefficient. Let's see, half of 4 is 2, but I want a negative, so it's a negative 2. Add. Half of negative 2 is negative 1, but I take the opposite, positive 1. Add. I get negative 20. Half of negative 20 is negative 10, but I take the opposite. Add. And there you go. I found my first zero. So the first zero we have is negative a half. So that is really a great situation to have a uh, half. What some people do at this point now is this is a quadratic equation because that would be a, 
uh, a number, right? Our rightmost number is a number. That's x, and that's x squared. So what people do now is they solve this using either factoring if they can uh, or a quadratic formula. I'm going to do neither. I'm going to keep going with synthetic division. And I'm going to go continue with synthetic division right where I left off. Okay, so if I've got a 0, I'm going to continue right from this point. So I'm actually going to continue right on from there. Okay, so now I have to make another gamble as to what new number to try next. I'm going to try negative 2 next. All right, so let's try that, and let's see if this works with synthetic division also. So you bring down the leading term, multiply, add, multiply, add. Ah, got another 0. So that's another factor as well. So, so far I've got two factors. And if I were to try rebuilding back my polynomial here to see what's left, remember that's a constant term, and then that would be x. So it looks like this is the other factor. So if I were to write all factors of this polynomial, which I'm going to do, let's see if negative a half was a factor, or I'm sorry, a 0. Got to get my terminology right. So if that is a 0, then you take the opposite for the factors. So that's a plus half. If negative 2 is a 0, then the factor is x plus 2. They're always opposite. And then here's our last one. Our last one is 4x minus 10. All right, so it looks like these are the three factors of this third degree or degree 3 polynomial. If it's degree 3, keep in mind that there's a maximum number of three factors. And, you know, sometimes they repeat. Sometimes you'll get the same uh, factor or same zero. So you can sometimes get a repeating factors. Okay, so this is how it works. And synthetic division is going to be what keeps everything together. And just continue right on. Once you get that zero remainder, just keep going on. So go back to mathguide.com. Check out our interactive uh, quizzes. Check out our other instructional videos and text lessons. It's all free, so enjoy. Take care.